ఇది సీనియర్ కాన్వకేషన్ సెరమనీ ట్వంటీ ట్వంటీ త్రీ కార్నర్లో ఇంకా సెరమనీ స్టార్ట్ అవ్వలేదు ఇది బర్టన్ హాల్లో ఉందన్నమాట ఇక్కడ వాటర్ ప్లస్ స్నాక్స్ కూడా ఆఫర్ చేస్తున్నారనమాట స్నాక్స్ కార్ అక్కడ ఉంది initiatives that foster an overall student sense of belonging well being that felt that felt good that felt where we need to keep this all afternoon okay okay um must to send you off to post cornell life with fanfare and cornell love you deserve this celebration after working so hard these several years through a campus shutdown a pandemic a hybrid year and the return to campus as we know it do me a favor turn to your neighbor Give them a high five and say, you rocked it, <laughs> alumni. I look forward to seeing your smiling faces as you make your way in the commencement ceremony on Saturday. And I can't wait to see the beaming faces of your family and friends as they celebrate this big day with you. Again, congratulations, Cornell class of 2023. I'm so thankful for your contributions and the hope and optimism you bring to your our campus. I hope you will remember this campus fondly and come back to share your stories of life after Cornell. Now, let's keep this party rolling. Throughout the program, we'll showcase several of your amazing classmates as they perform, sing, dance. Established in 20, or 2006, Break Free is an open style dance performance group. Break Free offers free dance workshops for the Cornell community, performs at various events on campus, and hosts an annual showcase every spring. Their key founding principle is dance to inspire, which they abide by in every practice and performance. Please join me in welcoming Break Free to the stage. <laughs> you can rock it, you can suck it, you can even put on your brand new jacket, because I have a man who can put you in a musical bracket. Uh, party like it's 1980, Thomas, that's a four I got trip like nose bleeds, but don't be where the hoes be. I don't like where that road leads. Me and my me low key. I don't do this for trophies, but some say I'm a shit because I'm with the sheep like Bo Peep. Hopefully. I am Abigail McDermott, a member of the 2023 Convocation Committee, and I would like to take a moment to introduce Adam Solomon. Adam is a graduating senior in the College of Agriculture and Life Sciences as a communication teacher. But is your classmates, your eventual support network, and those that you would make lifelong memories with. I encourage you to take the extra moment in your day to say hello to a stranger as you pass them by while you're walking to class, to ask someone genuinely how their day was, and to listen actively for their response, or to simply smile 
and not look through people as you encounter them on your daily travels. I think I had some skeptics in the audience that day, but I hope you rose to that challenge and acted with the care and intentionality about how you interact with others. So, as we leave Live Slope, may we never leave Cornell. This is now our alma mater. These four years have created who we are. We are more compassionate, more intelligent, probably more tired. Courtney is a graduating senior in the Nolan School of Hotel Administration. <laughs> She's concentrating in finance, accounting, and real estate with a minor in real estate. And she's also a Cornell Tradition Fellow and an active member of the Cornell community through her participation in Blockchain Capital. Thank you so much for that introduction, Yasmin. And now, without further ado, it gives me immense pleasure to introduce you all to our next speaker. Ken Jong emulates perseverance, humor, and versatility as a loved honor that you have joined us as the class of 2023's convocation speaker. The Student Selection Committee was entrusted with the opportunity to represent the students' voices and coordinate an impactful event. We wanted a speaker whose values, achievements, and insights would resonate with our unique college experience. At this time, I welcome Ken Jong, our class of 2023 convocation speaker, to the podium. Welcome to the stage, Ken Jeong. Thank you so much. Uh, wow, thank you. Give it up for, thank you, Courtney, for the best intro of my life. Semester of March 2020, the whole world shut down, and you were the consequences of that shutdown. You didn't give up, you survived, and now you're getting your degree. And like Vice President Lombardi says, I can't think of a class better equipped for the unknowns of life than the class of 2023. You have gone through so much, you have lived, lost, and now more than ever, you are loved and embrace a brighter tomorrow. And if you notice, no one ever talks about the pandemic anymore, right? I'm a doctor, I don't even talk about the pandemic. It's too traumatic. Are we talking about Pfizer and Moderna now? No. Are we doing toilet paper jokes or disinfecting those wipes that cleaned all our packages? No. And that was just a couple of years ago. I was miserable. I had discovered comedy at Duke and I, my love of acting in college, and that was my true passion my real love. And there are two types of decision-making in life, fear-based decision-making and decisions made out of love. And quite frankly, when I graduated, I made a fear-based decision. I went to med school, I decided to take the safe route, a fear-based decision. I did my residency in internal medicine. I even practiced at Kaiser Permanente and HMO in LA for seven years as a doctor, as an internist. And by the way, I'm in no way saying medicine was a bad choice. My wife still practices medicine to this day. And we preach to our daughters the importance of being educated at the highest level. Medicine wasn't a bad choice. I'm just saying it. I was miserable. I had discovered comedy at Duke and I, my love of acting in college, and that was my true passion, my real love. And there are two types of decision-making in life, fear-based decision-making and decisions made out of love. And quite frankly, when I graduated, I made a fear-based decision. I went to med school, I decided to take the safe route a fear-based decision. I did my residency in internal medicine. I even practiced at Kaiser Permanente and HMO in LA for seven years as a doctor, as an internist. And by the way, I'm in no way saying medicine was a bad choice. My wife still practices medicine to this day. And we preach to our daughters the importance of being educated at the highest level. Medicine wasn't a bad choice. I'm just saying it. So thank you so much. Um, we, we figured out 
figured that a doctor from Duke really wouldn't need an honorary degree. So as part of the Cornell tradition, we're really pleased to present you on behalf of the class of 2023 with this Cornell medallion. Oh. 